Yo, what's good, everybody? What up, anime fans? What up, otakus? It's your boy SBX coming to you once again with another video. And this time, I wanted to talk about my first ever anime review. And, you know, based on doing YouTube videos for a long time, I always wanted to, you know, do more anime related things. But this time, I want to do a review on. One of my favorite animes of all time in this day and age, even though it's been out since before I was even born, based on the manga. But today we're going to talk about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And the reason why I'm deciding to make a review on the anime show is because, like again, I'm a fan of the show. I love the series. Uh, didn't really too read too much of the manga, but for my experience on watching the show in general it's really good i mean that's the reason why it's called jojo's bizarre adventure because they got some bizarre shit going on in that show but basically i'm just going to talk about just the perspectives on the show but i would reconsider talking about these different arcs on the show so on a series there's about four arcs basically if I'm not mistaken but in all actuality there's at least I believe seven so on these arcs basically it's basically talking about each generation of what's going on in the Joestar family but basically Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is based on different generations of the Joestar family bloodline so it starts off with basically the first protagonist, which is Jonathan Joestar, who pretty much is the first Joestar from the series. Talked about his, you know, bizarre, twisted journey and triumphant battles between the antagonist and his um, adopted brother named Dio Brando who is pretty much one of the best antagonists from the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series you know but for me um on my next video on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure I would cover the first arc which is called Phantom Blood where it starts out with um Jonathan Joestar and Dio Brando and to be honest uh, a lot of people didn't really like Phantom Blood too much. Some people rather skip to the next arc, which is Season 2, which is Stardust Crusaders. But for people who are trying to be very open-minded to anime, or this particular anime show, uh, it's up to you. But in my opinion, I would not skip to, chapter, uh, to the second season. I would just watch Season 1. But the, the thing is about season one, there's two different arcs, you know, and they're cut very short. So basically Phantom Blood reached to number 10, one to 10, basically. So again, there's different protagonists in season one. So the first one, like I said, was the first protagonist, which is Jonathan Joestar from Phantom Blood and then you have Battle Tendency which is his grandson um, Joseph Joestar you know and then after Battle Tendency is Stardust Crusaders where again Joseph comes back and he's an older man and his grandson which is Jochiro Kujo who is his grandson and then later on there's Diamonds are unbreakable, which is the next protagonist and the next Joe, Joe Star, who is half Japanese, who is Josuke Hitachi, who is the son, pretty much the. How can I say it? That he's pretty much like the affair type of love child that Joseph pretty much had an affair behind his wife's back and you know pretty much had an affair with a Japanese girl which was kind of fucked up and then also Golden Wind which is like 
it takes place in Italy and, and another protagonist whose name is Giorno Giovanna who is pretty much Dio's son and also Jonathan's son as well which is pretty much basically you want to know why he's both Joseph I mean Jonathan and Dio's son but I'll explain later on on that note but there's other Jojo animes that didn't really had an animated series yet but it's still pretty much relevant based on mangas so another one which is Stone Ocean and the next protagonist is none other than Jolene Cujo who is Jochiro's daughter and basically Steel Ball Run which is Johnny Joestar and Gyro Zeppeli um, to me I feel like these two guys kind of like made the show pretty well even though it's based on the Joe Star's perspective but I've seen more likely Gyro and Johnny in a way and then also you have Joe Jillian which Josuke comes back again but he kind of like lost his memory and he's a whole different person wearing a sailor outfit or whatever so the whole concept like I said about the Joe's Joe's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is that you know they all have the same nicknames which is Jojo and they have a tattoo like like it looks like a tattoo but realistically it's a birthmark of the star which is pretty much represent the bloodline of the Joe Star family so again with each season it talks about every different generation of the Joe Star family and you know in the beginning of phantom blood and also battle tendency they were using this ability called hamon and at first the writer of jojo bizarre adventure hirohiko araki was having a hard time developing the show and basically the show based on season one was not all that good so he was feeling like he's losing some options about it so then when season two hits which was stardust crusaders and jotro was like the first person to be shown with an ability supernatural spirit type of power called a stand and introduce us to the stand and Jotaro stand which is called star platinum and how they name it they named themselves after a trout card or whatever so that's how it's pretty much started from basically from the show you know uh Hirohiko Araki has a very vivid and open mind he's really different from most Japanese manga slash anime artists where he doesn't really focus on just one particular country or anything like that he observed to the westernized culture like basically from the music from the from the trend from the appearance from the location the movies etc etc you know you see a lot of influence in everything you know you have where all the different characters of the Joe stars they're very big and muscular people and just the character the development all in total you know you don't see any Japanese people who are that physically buff you know and plus they wear some really tight ass clothes but you know some people who are very close minded who don't really know much about Jojo's Bizarre Adventure or just who have some sort of an eye will think that you know jojo bizarre adventure looks a little gay because of the you know flamboyancy and the way that they pose how colorful it looks like or sometimes the animation or just the things that they do mind you even though i'm a fan of the jojo's bizarre adventure it do have some gay moments you know literally gay moments from each like each episode but the vast majority of every Jojo character is not like that, you know? So, imagine if Prince was 
a protagonist and there's like a Jojo Bizarre Adventure and Prince was the protagonist. It's pretty much how it looks like in, in that angle. So, you know, wearing like blouses and tight, you know, pants and jackets and spandex and, you know, leather pants or whatever, you know. It, from my standpoint, when they really look more flamboyant when, when they showed you Golden Wind, where, you know, the protagonist, Jerno, Giovanna, he's wearing pink and he have his hair rolled up in the front, kind of like have like a roll up type of bang. And Bucciarati, of course, he looked like somebody's ghetto baby mama with that short hairstyle. But overall, don't let the appearance fool you because these guys will fucking kill you or kick your ass. But other than that, like, I, I love the fact that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has, like, it looks very westernized. And it, most of these characters are westernized, you know, no matter if they're from America, England, Italy, or Japan. They're giving us, like, the westernized vibe. You know, it's not just your typical anime. As far as the voiceovers between the subs and the dubs, I mean, just like anybody who watches anime from like original dub, which is Japanese, it's a lot better. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Let me be real with you. Hearing the subtitles is amazing. When you watch Blood. Uh, Phantom Blood I would say that in English it gets a little corny you know even though they did the accents a little bit like accurate to a certain extent because they gave a little bit of a British accent towards Jonathan and you know some other people but they seem as if they there's like one of those voice actors who can't really do a British accent worth a damn but th from that and you know battle tendency it's like everybody has their native like accent you know from you know Baron Zippoli and his grandson Caesar they have an Italian accent and you know it fits right to certain stereotypes but then after Stardust Crusaders, it's like nobody has an accent no more in the English dub. But I'll be honest with you, when I first watched the first three seasons of JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, I was watching it in straight dub. But then when I switched it to Japanese and rewatched between Phantom Blood, Battle Tendency, and watch the Stardust Crusaders where Dio face Jojiro. It sounds a lot better in Japanese. And the vast majority of watching Golden Wind, I just watch it in straight Japanese. And what I liked about the voice actors is you hear the emotion, even if they say words in English or whatever in a Japanese accent, like between Joseph and hearing Dio hearing you know Jotaro's catchphrase every time where he just feel like you know what the hell is going on or he looks agitated but to me I feel like I I, I love the dubs but I love the subs a lot more you know Dio's voice sound really good in both languages so does Jotaro so does Joseph when he's old, but I didn't understand why he switched from a British accent to a standard American accent. So, from my standpoint, uh, if I had to say what's my who's my favorite character from the show, it had to be, you know, Jotaro, you know, and also if I had to choose what's my favorite stand, I will have to say Star Platinum. Joe's case, you know, Crazy Diamond. I like from the protect the antagonist like uh, Yoshikage Kira, his stand, which is uh, Deadly Queen, you know, and Dio's The World, you know. I 
and I have to say who's my favorite antagonist it has to be Dio and from Steel Ball Run it's Funny Valentine you know because at least he keep it real even though he he knows how corrupt he is based on being the president of the United States at least he can balance the difference between knowing he's a bad guy and knowing that he can do good for the country so I'll explain Steel Ball Run in the next episode, like the next video whenever I get a chance to really look in depth on Steel Ball Run. But basically playing the games like, you know, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Eyes of Heaven, it gives you the, the dialogue of what's going on in each generation of the Joe Stars, you know. Uh, but anyways, go guys, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is one heck of an anime. I highly suggest y'all to watch it. You know, don't if you want to skip season one, I mean, that's up to you. But I wouldn't recommend you doing that. I want y'all to really get to know the story. Because that way you won't miss out anything. Uh, like I said, you know, based on playing JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Eyes of Heaven, I think it's a decent game. I'll do a game review about that in the near future but honestly guys uh what i liked about jojo bizarre adventure is just the physicality the story itself and it's ironic how they you know the writer uh you know hirohiko araki had pretty much named things after a rock band or you know, on some hip hop shit a little bit or some references or whatever. But again, like I said, my favorite stand have to be, again, Shining Diamond, Fan um, Star Platinum, and also Funny Valentine stand, which is D4C. And, you know, it's really long for, you know, saying it though. And, you know, the meaning of, you know, D4C, which means dirty deeds done cheap. I mean, dirty deeds done dirt cheap. So, D4C is a lot simple to really say, you know. But, anyways, guys, um, I'm done. I'd like to know everybody's opinion. Please leave your comments on the comment section below. I'd love to know everybody's opinion. What's your favorite JoJo Bizarre Adventure uh, character? What's your favorite art? Uh, my favorite art has to be realistically Stardust Crusader. Uh, make sure you share, like, hit that bell icon, and subscribe to the channel. Until then, folks, SBX wrapping this up. Thanks for watching. Peace out.